um, as long as you know what the parent graph is, then, or not only the parent graph, but the initial period, it makes life so much easier for these problems. So what I'm actually going to do is I'm actually going to graph on top of the parent graph, just so I can show you guys the differences or the changes. So if we're going to look at, um, actually, let me do a different color. Let's do what the parent graph looks like. y equals the tangent of x. So if you guys remember, the tangent of x, if that was 0, then we had went from pi halves to negative pi halves. And those were what we called the asymptotes. Correct? Then the graph looked like something like this. Correct? Then the period, remember there is no amplitude. So the period, though, was pi. Right? Really pi. Um, so therefore, to go to the next one, I would add this would be at um, pi. And this would be at 3 pi halves. Does everybody agree with me? Is everybody OK? Yes? Are we OK with this? That's what, the, that's what I gave you in your notes. You have that written down. It's also in your book. So for doing your homework, there's nothing that's provided to you. However, they're asking us to do tan of x. So if you remember our transformation function, y equals a times tangent of bx minus c plus d. Well, rather than going through all this information, guys, the only thing that really has changed we know that there's no change in our stretching or compressing, right? There is no amplitude. But remember, A was like the same thing as quadratic. It either stretches, compresses, or reflects. There's no, there's no A. So we know it's the same. Um, Bx minus C, that would be our phase shift. But if I set 2x equal to 0, I still, and solve for x, I still have x equals 0, right? So there's no phase shift. I'm not adding or subtracting anything outside the function, so I'm not shifting the graph up or down. The only thing that's different is I have a B. So remember that the period. is pi divided by b. So my period is now pi halves, right? So instead of the period going from being pi, now my period is pi halves. Well, what about the x scale then? Well, remember the x scale, previously the x scale was always still going to be pi halves. Um, now my x scale is going to be um, pi halves. Now it's going to be pi halves divided by 1 fourth. I'm sorry, divided by 4. Multiply by your reciprocal. Pi, where did I get 2? Why did I get pi halves? Oh, your period is pi halves. And that's going to be divided by equals pi over 8. Oh, yeah, OK. So that's going to be pi 8s. OK? So we have um, pi 8s, pi quarters, um, 2 pi 8s, 4 pi 8s, 5 pi 8s, no, 1, 2, 3, 4 pi 8s, which is pi halves, right? So now, though, my period, we know, is only going to be pi halves. Um, you know what? I did tell you guys to do it the scaling, but that's kind of getting confusing. But anyways, 1, 2, 3, 1, 2, 3. So now, if these are going to be pi 8s, this is 2 pi 8s, which is the same thing as pi 4s. This would be 3 pi 8s. Does everybody agree with me? Okay. So the, scale, the um, scale is pi 8's, but the period is now pi halves. So instead of for the whole pi 8's, now my asymptote is going to go from positive pi 4's to negative pi 4's. So now the graph, the period just got shrunk. Does everybody see how that happened? 
Instead of the period being pi, now the period is pi halves. I didn't shift it anywhere, so the intercept is still the same. It's just now the period got shrunk smaller. Does everybody see that? Then to find the next one, all I need to do is add pi halves to pi over 4. So pi halves to pi over 4 is going to be pi halves plus pi over 4, which is going to be 3 pi over 4. So let's keep on adding. This would be 4 pi halves, or 4 pi over 8, 5 pi, 6 pi over 8, which is 3 pi over 4. So my next asymptote is going to be right there. And then in the middle is going to be my next intercept. Does that make sense, kind of? No? Am I lost anybody? Questions? OK, um, again, let's just talk about the, did, this one didn't ask for the domain range, did it? It did? Yes, no, I don't remember. You just said graph it? All right, well, let's just practice domain range anyways. The range, how far low does this graph go? Negative infinity, how high is it going to go? Infinity, so the range is from negative infinity to infinity. Whereas the domain, I'm just going to write all real numbers such that x cannot equal, well, what's our, first, what's our first asymptote? Our first asymptote occurs at pi over 4, correct? So our first asymptote occurs at pi over 4, plus what is our, what is our period to our next asymptote? Pi halves. And how many times, so every single time I add pi halves, I'm going to go to the next asymptote, right? That goes adding pi halves or subtracting pi halves. So since I can add and subtract infinite many pi halves, I'll use n. So the domain, all real numbers, such that x cannot equal pi over 4 plus pi halves n. Does that make sense? The colon represents like the such that. Actually, it's not colon. We'd actually use a line. There you go. That's such that. It's a line. Got it?